I think this trope is one that we all know about, but maybe don't have a name for. Have you ever seen a character confidently dump an entire bottle of detergent into the washing machine, or leave the bathroom while the tub is still running? You probably have a pretty good idea about what happens next, and that's because it's a common setup. This trope is called domestic appliance disaster, but it overlaps with plenty of other tropes. First, I want to show an example that demonstrates that there doesn't have to be a whole bunch of emphasis on the appliance itself. Here's a clip from the season two episode of Dairy Girls, The Curse. Is it working? Of course it's working. Is the water rising? Jesus Christ, why is the water rising, James? Don't know that the water didn't rise in good feathers. Fuck, we've clogged it. Here's a plunger. I'm afraid I left the house without my plunger tonight, Orla. Hey, me two nightmare sodas. So again, there are much more direct examples of this trope, but I think this one shows how seamlessly it can be added into a scene, especially if the goal is nothing more than comedic effect. What makes this a prime example of the trope is that the payoff is that chaos overtakes the scene, which is not uncommon in this show. But in almost every case of this trope, there is chaos that follows. Overflowing washing machine, a clogged toilet, an exploding toaster, you name it. The other day, my roommate showed me New Girl, and I remember this one scene bothering me because Jess was holding her flat iron on her hair for, like, forever, and I thought it was the show making a mistake. But instead, it was just me reacting exactly how they'd want me to react. The audience is meant to clock the disaster in this trope before it even strikes. Your hair is on fire. And if the audience is meant to know, then this trope can be relevant to time and location. Certain appliances exist in some areas of the world, but aren't necessarily in others. And some appliances may have been refined and are much harder to mess up with now. There was actually a time back when washing machines were newer that this kind of mistake was happening to real life people. But I believe in plenty of suds. This machine does not. Rambunctious suds can clog its mechanism. But will Dash handle dirty slip covers like these? A snack for Dash. Dash cleans better than any other product, makes special for automatic. We'll see about that. Even in recent years, we can see that this trope isn't rooted 100% in fiction. There's even this one show, Young, Dumb, and Living Off Mum, that relies on the audience laughing at people who can't perform basic house chores and use basic appliances. You see the door is that one. And you press it down. So do it for me. Twist, press down, and twist. The first version of this trope I want to talk about is the humbling the mega rich take. The example I'll use is Sharpay and her spin-off movie of the High School Musical franchise, because media, especially in the 2000s to the early 2010s, was obsessed with a pink, sparkly mean girl who had loads of money. See, in the domestic appliance disaster trope, there is a hard emphasis on domestic. These tasks are meant to be easily performed by most adults, if not most children. While most teenagers know how to clean a bathroom or use a vacuum, we often associate the rich, and I'm talking like big bucks, not just McMansion rich, we often associate these people with not having to perform their own domestic duties. They have people for that. So when Sharpay graduates and her dad wants her to prove that she's a hard worker, she decides to do whatever she can to make it big as a performer, even if that means kissing up to celebrities and doing their chores. This starts her growth because it shows that she's willing to try new things, even if they're things she doesn't want to do. In a way, this was Sharpay's true coming-of-age story. The trope in this movie proved how much she changed from the beginning to the end. And on the topic of age and its relevance to this trope, I want to move on to the next sub-trope, Accidents Happen. I stole this straight from the example I'm about to use, the season 6 Rugrats episode by the same name, and in this episode, Chucky is perpetually pissing himself. And from this recurring issue, he feels a lot of shame. And I think we forget that shows like Rugrats walked so that Bluey could run, and be a show that does just as much for parents as it does for the children. And you might be thinking, Shannon, why are you talking about Chucky pissing himself when you're supposed to be talking about the domestic appliance disaster trope? I swear, Your Honor, I have a point. Oh, I have a point, I promise. In the same episode, Stu does another classic trope, the red sock in the load of white laundry, which I also think Dairy Girls did at one point. But his whole attitude is that accidents happen. Seeing this thrown so casually in an episode where Chucky is embarrassed that he's wetting himself overnight goes to show that we hold a lot less room for children to mess up than adults, when they typically have less control over their issues. At least you don't have to worry about the Finsters contributing to your laundry, Stu. <laughs> ah! 
It shows that accidents happen to both children and adults and that there's nothing to worry about. I've seen the same approach used with the children themselves. In Franklin and Arthur, kids try to perform domestic duties and use appliances, typically causing a mess. In these cases, the accidents happen concept is a lot more direct, and usually the verbalized lesson at the end of the episode. Third, this trope can be used to discuss gender norms, and usually to poke fun at them. The place is a mess, no one's fed the hyenas, and I can't find my socks! Where's Harley? This is one you can find in just about any show that has the dopey dad and responsible mom. This version of the domestic appliance disaster trope overlaps heavily with the men can't keep house trope, and also relies on the very real existence, rise, and downfall of the nuclear family. I highly recommend watching the documentary History of the Sitcom, particularly the episode Just Friends. It talks about the shift in sitcoms, particularly in the 90s, that brought the focus from wholesome family content to friend groups and a bit more open dialogue. Divorce became so commonplace, shows that diverted from family life in the 70s really reflected what was happening in reality in America. As a result, even shows that focus on a nuclear family aren't as traditional as they once were. The Belcher family is a prime example of a loving united family that doesn't fit this squeaky clean image that was once put on a pedestal. But even as the modern family changes, we still see remnants of those rigid roles. Family Guy is well known for holding up this trope of a goofy and unreliable dad and responsible and fed up mom. We still often pretend that men can't perform these basic domestic duties. Pleasantville cleverly dissects the world behind a nuclear family. Where's my dinner? Not to say you can't be happy as a part of a nuclear family, but rather that some people accept their place in it without questioning what they really want. This is definitely more relevant with older shows and movies, but Pleasantville shows that it's nothing to romanticize, Toby. As the characters slowly learn about free will or whatever, one wife catches herself thinking while ironing her husband's shirt, and burns the shirt, a domestic appliance disaster in reverse. Here, a woman whose sole job is to perform domestic duties messes up her domestic duty. But what about something more direct and relevant to a recent buzz phrase? You've all heard it, weaponized incompetence. Weaponizing incompetence is not gender specific. I did it all the time as a kid when I pretended to be asleep in the back of the car so my dad would have to bring me inside. But in this case, we are talking about the gender kind. Specifically, men purposefully being bad at domestic duties so that the wife can perform them alone. And I've been so excited to talk about this next show. I recently watched Kevin Can Fuck Himself, which is shot half in the sitcom style and half in a single camera drama style, depending on if the titular Kevin is in the room. This was a direct parody of that Kevin James genre of sitcoms. And in Kevin Can Fuck Himself, the goofball husband makes his hot but naggy wife's life miserable. He often messes up, especially when it comes to domestic tasks, so that his wife Allison has to be in charge of them. And since it's also your party, you get to pick up the supplies. Get to. <laughs> Typically, she handles all of their chores, despite them both working. Because as times changed, women weren't just staying home to perform these duties full time. I think that's why you see more criticism for these types of jokes now. In Homer's case, you could pretend it's because he's the one who works and Marge stays at home. It has nothing to do with gender, maybe. But in this case, they both have equal footing, and it 100% does have to do with gender. And as a bit of a segue, I would say that most instances in this show relate also to the next subtrope of domestic appliance disaster. Down on your luck, when you're already having a shitty day, and something in your house malfunctions. For example, in the Mario movie, they're both down on their luck and feel like their business isn't doing well. They have a chance, they break not just a sink, but a bathroom, and the disaster in this case puts them at rock bottom. Despite this trope typically being used for just a throwaway moment or scene in a much larger episode or movie, it's so widely recognized despite the name of the trope not being well known itself. But I do wonder if, as technology rapidly advances and younger generations are the ones with the greatest understanding of appliances, will this trope one day become obsolete or, at the very least, be used less frequently? Or will there be a whole new way to demonstrate the trope? Who's to say?